Hello everyone, welcome to Uncle Iroh's Tea Shop. In today's video, we are going to explore the world of Avatar The Last Airbender from the point of view of tea. Yes, you heard it right. I'm going to talk about what tea represents in the world of this franchise and how it is so important to everything that it holds so dear to its amazing stories and lore. If you are somebody who loves tea in Avatar as much as I do, drop a comment down below on why you believe it is so important to this franchise. It doesn't go without saying, but yes, my channel is called Uncle Iroh's Tea Shop. I almost feel like I'm the most qualified to talk about this given the name. I joke, obviously, but tea is also ultimately one of the reasons why I not only came up with the idea around my name of the channel, but around why Uncle Iroh is my favorite character in the whole of the Avatar world. At the same time, this is also a topic of which, when researching, I didn't really find any YouTube videos discussing this topic in depth. And so I thought, why not be one of the first to venture into that area on this platform? Now, I'm not going to bore all of you with the extensive amount of lore behind the different kinds of tea and tea houses that are represented in the world world of Avatar. We can definitely save that for another video if that is something that you would like to see. I want to start off by speaking to what I believe tea represents in the world of Avatar. If you think about it hard enough, while according to the lore, tea is a drink that is only consumed by the Earth Kingdom, Fire Nation, and Air Nomads, it is something in the world of Avatar that combines all four nations based on their elements. You have the tea itself in its liquid state to represent the Water Tribe, the hotness to represent the Fire Nation, the air of the steam inside the tea to represent the Air Nomads, and then finally the herbs, leaves, and other contents that the tea is made from to represent the Earth Kingdom. So like I said, it is a representation of all things in Avatar through those elements. It is a balance sort of kind of thing if you look at it that way. Usually when something inside of that balance is not working, then the others don't work either. Although I do think that the Water Tribes need to step it up and start drinking tea themselves because I think it would help their game, but I digress. Although that could be an interesting kind of theory video to make in the future about what would change about the Water Tribes if they started to drink tea. Something to keep in mind for the future given some of the other things that we are going to discuss in this video. Now, having said all that, there is an area of which I do want to talk about that actually comes from one of my inspirations to make this video. You see, I just gave my view on what I believe tea represents, and it's sort of the most simplistic way of looking at it. Somebody else also kind of did something similar a couple of years ago, and I credit this person the most with discussing the idea around what tea actually does represent. It is from a Reddit user named Pat Speed, who put this in the Reddit page Fan Theories. He says, and I quote, Throughout the show, Iroh has shown his actions that seem silly or weird have a double, deeper meaning when we know more about Iroh, and I think his love of tea is a perfect example of that. It clicked with me when we see Iroh explain to Zuko how that learning from all four elements helps to create a more rounded view of the world and be a better person. To make tea, you need all four elements to work together for it to succeed. You need the clay for the teapot and cups, the water for the substance of the tea, fire to heat up the tea, and air blown on the hot tea to cool it so that you can drink it. If you take one element out, tea is either impossible or worse without it. It is just a fascinating thought and the depth of Iroh that people may dismiss if anybody looked at him on a surface level. That is honestly a really good way to represent it. Now, admittedly, I will say I think I prefer the way I describe how the elements factor into it over how he did it, but I still like what he said because it's a good representation of the idea of what T does. His example of the scene where Iroh is teaching Zuko how to bend lightning, and in order to do this, he has to understand all the elements is precisely accurate. If you don't have an understanding of something, then there's not a balanced way to take it on in the first place. Zuko was very young at that time, and he didn't really understand the rest of the world apart from the Fire Nation, and so he didn't have that balance yet, which is why he was able to grow as much as he did into his character. It was out of that imbalance that he had, where he had that one narrow-minded view that the rest of the world needed to be ruled by the Fire Nation. But then, when he brought it all together through realizations of the world's cultures, he saw the good that it brought, which, of course, everybody knows, ultimately ended in one of the best redemption arcs in history. Now, I would like to bring this back around to my boy Iroh with regards to his journey, because he is the number one character character that T is most representative of in its qualities. There is an article from CBR that I'm going to quote some stuff from that I'll link in the description for you to go check out that talks about this. Iroh is a 
a character who champions balance in the world, as well as in people. Throughout Season 2, he tried to help Zuko find balance within himself, so he can finally know peace. He also takes the time to get to know others, and one of his favorite ways to do this is over a cup of tea. Whether it's with Toph on the mountainside, where Iroh gives her advice about accepting help, with the mugger in Ba Sing Se, where Iroh convinces him to pursue his real dreams instead of a life of crime, or with one of the many customers at the Jasmine Dragon. Iroh finds the good in people and helps them on their path to self-fulfillment, with tea often finding its way into the mix. This is truly a fantastic way to put it, and I absolutely agree with every part of it. This is why Iroh is my favorite character, because he is somebody that not only you can very easily like inside of the show, but he is also somebody who can be so well representative of the kinds of people that I personally wish we saw 10 times, almost 100 times more in real life. Just below this section in the article, you'll see that there is that picture of him sitting down with the guy who tried to rob him in Tales of Bossing Say. In this moment in the episode, he didn't want to fight the guy who wanted to harm him and rob him, but instead he wanted to bring out the good in him. He does this when also having them sit down and have some nice tea together. So in a way, this is an outlook on the idea that tea is also something that when brought into the show, it is usually within a moment where something good is trying to be brought about. We just laid out a few of those examples. This is also just something that is very representative throughout the entirety of the show, in my personal opinion. When you look at the trajectory of where our main characters go, they're trying to stop a war that has been going on for a hundred years between all four nations. He believes, or I should say in this case, Aang believes that he has to find a way to bring peace to the world. And I feel like T is a good way to look about the idea of how people need to try and go and find the good in people because at the end of the day, that is truly all that was needed to end the war in the first place and that's how you got those redemption arcs from characters like Zuko. The final part of the article also lists out some other things that T does that are also representative in Iroh because of this relationship with T. Both represent balance, unity, peace, purity, respect, and many, many other qualities of good people. It can also represent the enhancement of your abilities, especially if you are a bender, and gives great strength and energy. After all, they don't call Uncle Iroh the Dragon of the West for no reason. I mean, did you see what he did in the finale to the walls of Ba Sing Se while it was controlled by the Fire Nation? He was so powerful and filled with energy at that moment. Granted, he did have Sosan's comet to help him, but you get my point. One last thing I would like to bring up to jump off that point is that there is another quality that it brings around on an activity that a person could commit themselves to, and that is meditation. Iroh is well known for meditating a lot, and this comes a lot from what T does to a person. We are now venturing off out of Avatar the Last Airbender, and now we are actually going to move over to the Legend of Korra. So, in the Legend of Korra, for anyone who has seen it, which I assume is all of you, we see that when Korra goes to the spirit world, she comes across Iroh. When the show first came out, a lot of people I imagine were very confused by this. The reason he was able to do this is because he has that connection to the spirit world through meditation. I think that T had a great benefit in giving him the ability to do this given how balanced he was. He's also just a very spiritual person, and as we've mentioned many times, he's not hostile towards anything. The spirits in the spirit world like to be friendly, and I think that is one of the reasons why he was able to get there in the first place. It's also important to mention the fact that one of the reasons reasons why he wanted to go to the spirit world in the first place was to actually find his son, who he lost during the war. But we cannot leave out the fact that meditation was also important in that, in that T has a direct connection to meditation. Meditation is all about being calm, and something he does for people is make them calm through having tea with them. So basically, I think the point of this whole entire video is that Uncle Iroh, he's just a goddamn beast. I mean, again, this is why he's my favorite character, because I feel like I look up to him because of what he does, and I feel like we should all appreciate T for what it did for him. I really like making videos like this because it is fun and I'm passionate about it, so I hope you all liked this. With that all being said, I think that's where I'm going to close off this video, ladies and gentlemen. Please comment down below your thoughts on this video topic and my commentary on it, and add anything in that you want into the discussion. If you did enjoy the video and you like this kind of content, be sure to give this video a like and let's see if we can hit a goal of 100 on this video. If you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to be updated for when I upload again in the future. My fellow benders of all four nations, thank you all for stopping by Uncle Iroh's Tea Shop. On your way out, be sure to let him know how much you appreciated his jasmine tea and his words of wisdom that come with it. I hope everyone here has a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you all soon for more Avatar.